you are one spring control, you will clear to land. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now making our final approach on the Games Master Resort. We wish you an enjoyable stay. The Games Master Holiday Rig New Year Funkathon has just drawn to a close. The campers laughed, cried, quaffed, and shared testosterone profiteroles. Andy Murici was there, inviting in the first footers of all shapes and sizes to come inside. So it is with very fragile countenances we welcome everybody's hair of the dog, the Games Master. Welcome onto the Games Resort. You will have to pardon me if I seem a little um out of sorts this evening. I think the festive season has left me a little um the worse for wear. Anyway, tonight's first sortie is an antipodian jaunt on Tasmania. To satisfy me, the Tasmanian devil needs to be guided through the second level of Badlands in under two minutes. Don't forget to whirl like a cyclone as... <sighs> Confound it! Dash those blasted seagulls! <clears throat> oh well, good luck then. And tonight's Tasman Devil from the cheesy wastes of Cheshire, please welcome Nick Kapoor. <laughs> Nick, how confident are you tonight on the challenge? Oh, I'm fairly confident, but there's a very strict time limit, so I'm going to have to speed through. OK, and that car at the end's quite tough. Yeah. Well, we wish you all the best, Nick. If you'd like to prop yourself down on the games playing chair, we'll get ready to start. And aiding and abetting me for this challenge is Neil West from Mega. Welcome, Neil. Thanks, Dominic. It's fab to be here. OK, Neil. Now, this is quite a tough challenge. He's got to complete both parts of Section 1 and wall up the end of the level car. Any tips? Yeah, um, there's a long way to go. Um, all he's got to remember is that if he's spinning when he jumps, then he covers an awful lot more ground in a lot less time. So I'd recommend that. And don't eat bombs. OK, then. Nick, are you ready? Yeah. Then your two minutes begin now. OK, he's off. Now, he's, he's jumped straight over the first lot of chilies. I think that's probably a mistake. Um, if he eats the chilies, it gives Taz fire breath with which he can take out baddies. OK, now, he, he also walked a little... Uh, car he's walloping carton yeah, things Yeah, that's there, right. He? Now, that's OK. Um, those little cartons, those little capsules, they give him extra energy, but he's still got all his energy left, so he doesn't need them yet. Okay, but later on in the challenge, he might have to take some of those on board. He's going at a feral pace. Oh, no, he's in the quicksand. Yeah, all what he's got to do is keep jumping, and he's safe. Um, now, if he makes full use of his spin attack, then he doesn't actually have to get in the quicksand at all. He can miss all of it. Out. Okay, then he's uh, just over 30 seconds, just over a quarter of the way through, and he's doing very well, Neil. He's very wrapped well up indeed. the first bit in 37 seconds. Yeah, he got past all those geezers with great style indeed. Just took the first one and then span all the way across. But this is going to be a little bit tricky. Are we going to see is. some of the shortcuts yep. you told us if about? If he jumps on top of this guy here, yep, straight oh, up. nicely done. That misses out a good, well, 20, 30 seconds worth of level, right? Oh, he's that's got the chilies. chilies. He's got the chilies. Okay. Can we look no, at some bottom burps here? <laughs> well, perhaps mouth burps, don't okay. <laughs> Um Okay, so we'd nearly had one minute there. He's still progressing at an in immense. Yeah, he's not something. doing too bad. <laughs> Indeed, he's not doing too badly at all. Right, one quick capsule there. His energy level goes straight back up to the top, and he earns an extra hundred points. Okay, so here he goes. He has. And got... there we go. Oh, thank you, Neil. Okay, yes, he's uh, one Almost minute. Almost as deadly as yours, Dominic. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. Little uh, burp there. Now he's got 40 seconds left here, Neil. How close is he to the end of the level? Not too bad at all. The end of the level's almost in sight, but remember he's oh. got to kill. He's got to get through the second and get to the car as well. And Sorry, Neil. Ta Tasmanian's fi fiery breath even took me by surprise there. <laughs> okay, now he's going to have about 25 seconds left to wall up this car. Can he, he can do, do it, Neil? Yes, he can. Um, now, normally he could perhaps grab a bomb and throw it at the car, but he's not allowed to do that in the challenge. What he's got to do is time his jump so he. Oh he no, he's been hit. hit. He's took he a hit. Okay. He's, what, he's, he's only got, got 15 seconds left. Right, he's got to make sure he jumps on top of the car as it passes underneath him. He could. 10 seconds. This. It's going to be very close. Ten yep. seconds, eight seconds, and seven. He's done it. He's done it. Six he's seconds there. to go, and Nick has completed the challenge. Cool. Now, Nick, the chili was quite impressive there, but towards the end, you got a couple of wallops from the car there. Were you worried at all then? Well, yeah, but I knew I could still do it. 
Okay then, well, Nick, you have won television's most glittering prize, the Games Master Gordon Joystick! <laughs> So let's have another round of applause for tonight's competitor, Nick Kapoor! <laughs> and now it's time to see which games will whip you to a frenzy and which will leave you unstarred in the reviews. This week, it's everything from Milky Ways to Uranus as we study sci-fi games. First up, extraterrestrial gun-toting tomfoolery in a console bat with warp speed. There are many words you could use to describe warp speed, but unfortunately, all of them have got four letters. Too much emphasis on graphics, too much emphasis on, oh, look what the SNES can do, and very little on gameplay or longevity. At the end of the day, I think that warp speed is a missed opportunity. There's plenty of scope and plenty of potential for a really excellent 3D space combat game on the Super NES. Unfortunately, this just ain't the one. Next, the sequel to the definitive sci-fi game, Elite 2 High Frontier. Well, the freedom, again, is the main attraction of this game. You can be a, a ruthless pirate killing everything and scavenging everything, or you can be a a bum-licking merchant. I was very impressed by Frontier. It's a huge game with a tremendous sense of realism, so I'd recommend it wholeheartedly to anyone. By mixing a substantial amount of space trading and a lot of space shooting, Frontier manages to keep you coming back for more. Finally, penetrate what looks like gaping galactic parliaments in Eye of the Storm. Eye of the Storm puts you in the role of a futuristic Noah with a space freighter as your arc. The idea is to cruise around the planet searching out for undiscovered creatures and intergalactic flora. Graphically, it's very sort of clever, clever PC, you know, rotating 3D graphics, and the gameplay is enormous. Ultimately, I think either Storm's appeal is limited, not because it's um, a small game, it's actually very large, but because all the things that you can do are not particularly that interesting. A couple of veritable corkers there tonight. Now it's time for us to stride majestically onto the celebrity challenge. So let's see what Games Master has planned. For my second challenge, I thought we might indulge in a spot of soccer on Super Kickoff. Two one minute halves, if you please. Should the result be a tie, the matter will be resolved by a penalty shootout. I trust we'll all be treated to a display of the exemplary gamesmanship. Now, young Tammy Edmead wrote to us saying she wanted to play this football game. But who could we put her up against? Well, we've put her up against one of the best. So please welcome Tammy Edmead, who's playing Arsenal and England striker Ian Wright. Welcome, Ian. Now, OK, thank you. Thank you. Now, now, Tammy, there may be a lot of people sitting at home, a lot of conservative people thinking, what's a girl doing playing a football game? But you play football yourself, don't you? Yeah, that's right. I play for the Arsenal girls team. Right, so you know, you know about the players. What's your tactics going to be against Ian? Just a lot of passing and a lot of attacking. OK, then. Now, Ian, you are probably the most feared striker in the Premier League, but how are you going to get the ball to your front men? Uh, I think I'm going to play the long ball game. Uh, right. If that don't work, then I'll have to wait to go to penalties. OK, then. It looks like you're the pre-match favourite, slightly, Tommy. If you'd like to sit down in the right-hand chair, Ian in the left, and we'll get ready for kick-off. And joining me in the dugout is Dave Earlybath Perry from Sega Pro. Now, Dave, you're no stranger to scoring yourself. Have you got any tips for our players today? Well, the difficulty with this game is uh, mastering dribbling because the ball doesn't actually stick to the player's feet. So, uh, with that in mind, it's often a good idea to just take a long shot and rely on a goalie's, goalie's mistake. OK, so we've got two one-minute halves. Right, are our competitors ready? Then kick off, please. Ian is playing in the Arsenal away strip, the yellow playing up the pitch, and Tommy is in the red playing down the pitch. 
Ah, and they just started to kick off, and that was like, oh, a lovely little floating ball, but it's going to throw in. Straight into touch. Straight into touch there. Don't like the linesman, kick a ball in. They certainly don't. And the crowd has started cheering for their favourite here. It's a, it's a real tension filled match, ball. this. Oh, and here comes, here comes uh, Tommy the right in the pitch here. No, oh, no, he takes a bat. Lovely little turn on the ball. But Tommy's got a real bat in midfield here. Tommy's had the most of the forward action. For this it's definitely time. Tommy. She's, she's definitely got more control. She plays a lot of football games at home. Yeah, she's a lovely but, little uh, dribbler, isn't she? Once again, long shots, getting no power on them, though. How can you get more power on your shots, Dave? Good power. Um, mainly by holding down the B button when you fire, and you just get that little bit more power. Um, and a, qu a quick stab does it. Okay, here comes Ian on the break. His man's giving away. His man follows it up. Oh! Straight to the goalie. Like I said, it's often best to take a long shot rather than take it in near the goalie because these goalies are pretty good. Oh! Oh no, but Ian's picked number it up nicely. Ian's through. dribbling up number two. What a brilliant display. He's up to the goal. Oh! But he gives it away. But Ian's picked it up again. He's dribbling up. He's hit the outside of the box. Nice, He's shot. Nice shot. Oh! Let's no. get too close to the goalie. How'd he came. I tell you what, Ian's defenders make lovely strikers. That's right. Oh, and it's half time. And the score is nil nil. Okay, so this game is very finely poised. We've seen a lot of action, but not too many goals. So if you want to find out who wins between Tammy Edmead and the Arsenal and England striker Ian Wright, join us after the break. Games Master Stadium, where young Tammy Edmead is holding the First Division's top scorer last season, Ian Wright, to a goalless draw. We're hoping to see much more goal match action this half, so if our two competitors are ready, let's kick off the second half. Dave Perry from Sega Pro is still with me here. Dave, um, how are we going to see some goals this half? I hope so. Scoring seems to be a real problem in English football at the moment. It certainly it? is. <laughs> Maybe they're drafting Warren B or Prince Charles. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we've got. Um, Ta uh, Ian is in the yellow Straight kit playing Straight back to the down. goalie Tommy's again. Tommy's in the red kit playing up. Now here comes Ian Wright, he's got it, but he didn't get very far. Here comes Tammy, Tammy again. again. My money's on Tammy at the moment. Oh, no, but that's still not getting anywhere. Ian's got it. Oh, oh my God. Oh. Foul. Foul by Tommy. Oh, Tommy's got a, a yellow flash card. A flash of yellow. Quite right, too. Free that's, kick. That's Ian evil. sends it mysteriously across the pitch, but it's picked up by his number eight. Oh. And Tammy is really, really bad here. Oh, okay, he's got number four again. Got Tammy coming up the pitch. But it's all Tammy number four. It's got it. This boy gets everywhere. Oh, scrolling save. That's the goal that comes our goal so far, Dave. The goalie turned into a stretched blob. <laughs> Certainly did. Brilliant. Putty goalie there. Here's number two again. Number two and number four for Tammy. Come on, There's only Tammy. 13 seconds left. Number Good four. to get a goal at the death in the ten game. And four. There's several ten and fours in Tammy's side. <laughs> Ian picks it up again. He's running up. There's only he six goes, seconds left. Is he going to square at the end? He runs it up. He dribbles oh, the goal. He gets it. We're just running out of time. The referee looks at his watch and he blows oh. the final whistle. The game has ended in a nil-nil oh. draw. So, Dave, it's penalties. Okay, so, so the, unfortunately this titanic midfield battle has ended in a nil-nil draw, so now we're going on to penalties. Each team has five penalties each. If it's still level at the end of it, it goes on to sudden death. So, Ian Wright, if you'd like to step up to take the first penalty. Okay, Dave, hopefully we're going to see a goal here. What's the control method? I'd penalties? like to think so. Basically with penalties, what will happen is the players will step to the ball, there'll be an arrow in front of the goal, and you have to press the fire button just when that arrow's where you want to put the... Oh, yes! Beautiful! Yeah. Right in the corner. Goal! <laughs> oh, 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 oh! Okay. Oh, oh and he puts that one beautiful. wide. The pressure's good on that. Was a real Stuart Pearce stroke Chris Wardle <laughs> combination. That, and that here comes Tammy. She could take the lead here. England important penalty kick. Oh, oh yes! Oh, yeah. He's got a Scottish goalie's disease. <laughs> oh! oh! But he's put that one. Little shuffle to the side. Oh, yeah. So it's two on. This is Tammy's stop one she's about to take now. Oh, yeah. Oh! you got two penalties each left, <laughs> and it's 3-2 to Tommy. He doesn't want to play, he wants to go home, doesn't he? I can't play him. Oh. Oh. No, Tommy's one doesn't want to go anywhere. <laughs> oh. Oh. Ian's got one. to score this one to stay in got the game. <laughs> That's a question. Ian should oh. score! Oh. It's four all, Tommy's got one more left. If Tommy scores this one, she's won the challenge. So here goes Tommy, Tommy's man's at the ball. He shoots, he yeah. scores! Tommy wins the challenge! Thank you. Thank you. Now, now Ian, you, you got the draw like you were hoping for. You went to penalties. But talk us through your goalkeeper. What was he doing? I don't know. He wasn't moving when I was pressing him to move. I don't know what was wrong with him. <laughs> but the way the game went, Tammy played a lot better than me. I think she deserved to win in the end. Okay. 
So well done, Tammy. You've beaten one. Of, Ian's one of your footballing heroes, isn't he? Yeah. He must... He's brilliant. Oh, that's good. Okay. Well, Tammy, because you've beaten Ian, you are the proud winner of television's most glittering prize, the Games Masters Golden Joystick. <laughs> Okay, thank you, thank you. Now, after that hectic display, it's time for some tips on games and life in general from the Games Master. Hello, Games Master. Welcome up to the helipad. What is it that's troubling you? On Zelda 3, I cannot get to the second part of the Skull Forest Dungeon. Please, can you help me? At the top left of the forest, you'll find a large animal skull. Burn this with the fire rod to reveal the entrance. Thanks very much. No problem whatsoever. Next, please. Hello, Games Master. I'm sorry, but that haircut isn't good enough. I'll have another, please. Hi, Games Master. That's better. What can I do for you? On Kid Chameleon, I hear there's a warp to the final guardian of the game. Where should I be looking? At the end of Blue Lake Woods 2 area, instead of touching the flag, jump onto the bonus block above and press the following combination. Diagonally, down right on the dry pan, then jump and the special buttons together. You should then warp onto the final boss. <laughs> Makes a mockery of £39.99, doesn't it? Thank you, Games Master. I think we'll have just one more. Hi, Games Master. Hello, young whippersnapper. For Smash TV on the SNES, is there any way I can make the game easier for myself? There is, my boy. But remember, cheats never prosper. So keep this one to yourself. Select Skill from the Options screen. Now hold down the L and R buttons before pushing up on the joypad. If you've done this correctly, you will hear Bingo! Bingo! And the secret Options screen will appear where you can choose to have up to seven lives and seven continues. Thanks a lot. Those words of wisdom conclude tonight's consultation. Later. Some more good old-fashioned solutions to modern-day problems. Now it's back to the slightly misshapen headed one for tonight's final challenge. Back so soon? The appetites of the boy racers everywhere will be sated by my last offering for tonight. A high-speed encounter on Nigel Mansell World Championship. Each contestant has one go to record the fastest possible lap time. Don't forget to fasten your seatbelts. For this challenge, we have a bourgeois v proletariat struggle Lennon himself would have been proud of. Please welcome Clive Borden and his boss, Richard Walkling. <laughs> welcome, Clive. Welcome, Richard. Welcome to the show. Now, first of all, Clive, you, is it the case with Richard that you guys have to do all the work and he sits in the office practicing games? Definitely that. Um, he's not too good at them, though. So there's obviously a bit of a rivalry here, then, Definitely. Clive. We've got scores to settle. All right, then. Richard, it must be difficult getting good staff these days. It is very difficult. And who do you think is going to win, then? Are you, who's the favourite? Well, we've both had a practice, and, you know, it's been close, so it's going to be, I don't know, down to sort of last-minute things, and we'll see what happens. All right, Clive, if you'd like to go first, prop yourself in the games playing chair. Richard, hang on behind, make sure he's not slacking or anything like that. <laughs> exactly. We'll get ready to start. And joining me in the pit is Super Pro's Dave Perry. Welcome, Dave. Hi, Dominic. Now, Dave, they're not using a joystick here. They're actually using a steering wheel. Is this going to be easier or harder for them? Well, the idea of the steering wheel is, is that it gives you the feeling of being there. And um, for, for some, some people might find it easier, but, but it's a matter of personal preference, really. OK, each of our challengers have one lap each. Whoever does the fastest time wins the challenge. Clive's going first. Are you ready, Clive? 
then rev up and off you go. Okay, so here we see Clive and off he goes. We can see the time in the very, very top left-hand corner of the screen here. On the map in the top middle, you can that actually shows you see where you are. are. He's the white car, currently second to last. So currently hitting all the signs and blocks <laughs> currently along the road. Uh, there's, you know, there's, there's no crash mode in this, but you do lose a bit of time when you hit it. You get you get pushed backwards a little bit, and you have to. And also, the computer has to drop you down into first to get you going again. Okay, so it just costs a bit of time. He's got he's going all over the place. That looks like it's a one gross too many there. I think. <laughs> Lots of nice little adverts along the side of the road for Gremlin. <laughs> okay, uh, the time the is 36 seconds so far. The blobs on the track at the top of the screen. The white ones rec they, they represent the Williams car. The red right. ones are McLaren. Yellow one's a Lotus. OK, now he's actually made it in the first place. This should be easier now, Dave. He, should... he won't have any in front of him. That's right, he shouldn't be hitting things really now. If he just watches his cornering, make sure he doesn't hit any of the things OK, we can see he's coming at the home straight. Oh, just after this bit. Oh, no, someone's been overtaken him. It's going to slow him down That's a bit. Seriously affect one minute, time. three seconds. He's out of the tunnel. Just around the final bend here. Here he comes towards the finishing line. And the time is... One minute, ten second, point seven zero. It's not very, a bad time. Not a bad time at all. A very commendable time. time for Clive. Clive, as you'd like to vacate your seat, make way for Richard Walkling. OK, Richard, if you're ready, then off you go. It's important to get a good start. Get okay. a good start and take as many cars early on. So okay, he, got away, he got away from three then, very well. Oh, no, but one of them's overtaken him there. Eyes around him. See his position in the left-hand side of the screen. He's ninth out of 12, 10 out of 12, actually. He's gone back Curiously a bit now. Curiously dangerous tactic of actually going on the grass to overtake. <laughs> uh, he doesn't want to get near those other cars, does he? <laughs> and he's, he's, to stay on the he's up to nine, he's up to eight. Beautiful bit of overtake. Lovely little now. spunky search there from uh, <laughs> Richard, but he slipped Lost back there. I don't know what's going on. I think maybe he's not keeping the steering wheel tilted forward. With this joystick, you have to have it tilted forward or the, or the car breaks. Right. Maybe that's his problem. I don't know, I'm sure he'll have some excuse. OK, 38 yeah. seconds gone. It's not too bad, actually. It's no, quite close no, to this point. No, it's got a nice bit of clear road here. Get his speed up. Oh, he's no, lost a bit, think a bit more about his cornering. He's swinging out wide, hitting the signs. Right, because as before with Clive, every time you hit something, it does slow you down. Oh, yes, dear. Yes, it does. Part of that with 54 seconds. OK, well, the time was to be as well. There's no excuse ten. for this, really. There's no cars on the road in front of him. He, sh he shouldn't be hitting He's up to sixth place. He's gone one minute. It's going to be back. quite close to actually, do. He's got about six seconds now. It's very, coming, very he's close. One more straight here. One oh, more straight. Stuck by that no, he's to get round this man. Come on, the bridge. Oh, oh, it's coming last moment at 10. Oh, no, oh, he's not going to do this. Just, time. He's just over. over. Oh, and here he it's comes. One minute. Great, it's a brave attempt. It's a brave attempt. So Richard finishes in 118.24. It's good, but not good enough, which means Clive is the winner. Settle down a bit. Now, Clive, that was absolutely brilliant. You completely tanked him. What, what have you got to say for yourself? Well, it's definitely one for the workers, and it shows you that it starts with his staff and it ends there. <laughs> All right, well done. Listen, Richard, I bet you're going to dock a day's holiday off him for this. Doesn't get a holiday. All right, <laughs> fair enough then. All right, well, Clive, you may not have a holiday, but you do have a Golden Games Master joystick! <laughs> So let's give another round of applause for Clive Barton and Richard Walkling. <laughs> well, we've run out of time once more. The dinner gong has sounded. Auntie Marisha's done us some halibut lightly tossed in brine. I'll see you next week. Good night. The Games Master Club is open to all our viewers. It costs £11.15 for a year's membership. To find out more about what you get, either send a large stamped address envelope to the Games Master Club, PO Box 91, London E14, 9GT. Or you can ring this number, 0891 600 123. Calls cost 36p a minute, cheap rate and 48p at all other times. You must have permission from whoever pays the phone bill.